So, what we're looking at here, uh, you may have seen this video before, but what I'm going to do is uh, an audio talk through. Um, I could only put so much uh, text onto the video uh, which I put together, so the video itself needs, needs a further explanation. So, this is what um, this recording is all about. So, I hope you enjoy it and you can see the symbology or the symbolism that are on these Pictish stones um, I ask you to carefully consider uh, the words and the things that I'm saying and showing um, I have been looking at these things for 30, 40 years 40 odd years since I was 10 and uh, it's only now at 52 year old that I uh, after a long journey through religions and various spiritual paths that I have came to the knowledge of where the gate of heaven is and how it was here all along and there are people who say that it's not a physical place but um, I beg to differ and so did our ancestors and it's a sad day really that most people believe that it isn't a physical place, that there isn't a physical entrance to another realm and another world and that there isn't a place where creation began uh, because they have turned people against um, the words of the Bible and the religious movements and in doing so they have robbed themselves of the fruit of the tree. Uh, so I hope to put these videos together and I'm pushing as much as I can to explain them to people uh, as I've been doing my research over the last 30 odd years, 40 years. Now, we seem to be getting interference again, so what I'm going to do is unplug my speakers and pause, and we'll continue in a few moments. Yeah, the speakers seem to be um, playing up me, so I need to get a new set of speakers. I just got a new PC, but I need a new set of speakers now. Uh, either that, the spirits are playing games with me, uh, the furies are furious, <laughs> or the fireys, uh, the finnies, the fi um, the, the two of the man. <laughs> anyway, you know what I mean if uh, you've been watching my other posts or watching my other videos. But um, what we're going to look at is the Pictish standing stones and what the Pictish and the Gaelic and the Gals and the Picts left for us is very important. They've made the Pictish people uh, a mystery people and those who are scholars and um, those who are following the Pictish trail from uh, the universities and who are being funded of course, those who are writing books and those who are just lazy and not doing the research, they're missing out on the truth or not revealing the truth to the people and uh, I'm trying to reveal the truth, the Pictish people are the ancestors of the cradle of civilization and the things that they um, carved and the large monoliths that they that were replicated all over the world uh, but they, they built here in the British Isles uh, tell us exa exactly where the center of heaven is and where Eden is and it's certainly not in the Middle East or the Far East or the Near East but it is here at the North Celestial Pole and I'm going to go through this um, video that I made earlier on because it's quite good, it shows descriptions of uh, the formation of creation and it also shows a catastrophe but before um, I go on and continue looking at that what I want to do is um, quote from you or read for you from a book um, by uh, Andis Collins and that's A N D I S K A U L I N S Andis Collins Andis Collins the surname is K A U L I N S and it's JD Stanford University Press Trafford Publishing and the book's called Star Stones and Scholars The Decipherment of the Megaliths There is an ISBN number there and the ISBN number is 141 so it's ISBN 
forward dash five and it stars and stones the scholars the decipherment of the megaliths by Andis Collins and I believe he's an American um, he's a lawyer um, so yes very very interesting he is trained at Harvard University or Stanford University yes sorry Stanford and I'm going to quote, quote from his book and in his book, uh, Star Stones and Collars, uh, Scholars, Scholars, he's actually having a dig, as we would say in Scotland. He's having a go at the scholars and how that it's so obvious that these standing stones throughout the world are all pointing to the North Celestial Pole, and that most of the scholars miss or conveniently do not. Uh, recognize that most of the stones are shapes and figures of beings, creatures, animals, men, women and uh, anybody who speaks about these things are seen as pseudo-scientists, pseudo-scholars uh, and uh, the scholars scoff at them. So, But he writes this fantastic book called Star Stones and Scholars and it's a book which I have just received in the last month and a half so it adds so much to much of my work but I have actually came across Anders Collins website when it was up and running I don't think it is now but when it was up and running I managed to download some maps of the Neolithic sites in Scotland and I'll put uh, images of this in here so that we know what we're talking about but um, and this will overlay this image and I can zoom back and forward to the stones uh, when, when need be um, so the map, uh, the Neolithic sites in Scotland near Aberdeen represents Cephas and the neighbouring stars. So according to the Neolithic uh, Bronze Age and Iron Age uh, mapping of the standing stones within the Aberdeen area to the Dawn side and the Upper Dawn side area uh, round about uh, a place called Old Keg. Uh, round uh, Glassell, down in Buchan, and then up at Brumeg, Brun End of Cricky and Easter of Quarters, and then Lone End of Daviot, and all this sort of area, Loudon Wood, uh, uh, which is near Peterhead. This area was the Circle of Heaven, and he says here in, in his book, in page 43, page 42 contains this map, uh, which I'll, I'll, I'll have on now. And you can see the circle on the map running through uh, Cephas. And that is the pole star, it says down the bottom there, Ursa Minor. So you have Ursa Minor and you have a, a circle. And that is the circle of heaven, the core. Uh, the Gallic word for circle is core. So that's the core, the core, the wheel, uh, which is one of the wheels within wheels that e Ezekiel speaks of. And I'll get into a, a teaching or a discussion and uh, about the revelation about Ezekiel's wheels because they can also be um, transposed up into the heavens and shown by the stories that are in the heavens and the mythologies that uh, were handed down by the peoples who lived in these upper parts of the northern hemisphere. So in his page, in page 42 we have this uh, map. On page 43 I will just read as he has printed in his book and this is a copyright book but the information is very important and I'm sure the type of man that he is he wouldn't mind uh, his information being shared. Uh, I have shared his name and the ISB number I would suggest by the book it's paramount in understanding or understanding anything to do with the heavens, standing stones, pictish stones, stone circles, ley lines and any of these things all over the world and it is fantastic. Page 43, Cephas, landmarked by stone sites near Aberdeen. Cephas, landmarked on earth as stone sites near Aberdeen. The ancient astronomers were Cephans. So C-E-P-H-E-A-N-S. The ancient astronomers were Cephans, who made Cephas the father of their royal family of stars. Cephas in Sumerian temple hymns is translated as E.C. Abzu, the shrine which is the Abzu. In Latvian, Abse, Abzu, the go-around. And this is me putting this in here like a, a merry-go-round. And this is where we get the idea of the merry-go-round and the horses and so on. So, But carry on from his book. That was my input. And in the pharaonic Egypt, Cephas was also known as Cheops. So the pyramid at Giza, this is my input, was Cheops. 
So the tip of Cephas marks the circle of procession and was intentionally so designed by the ancient sky surveyors. So the ancient sky surveyors were Cephans. Cephas is landmarked by the Neolithic sites in Aberdeenshire. The following sites from the shape of the stars of Cephas make up the house of Cephas. Most site names have ancient comparable star names, such as Old Keg, Midmar Kirk, Al Firk, San Honey, Sonas, Colliery, Tyabaga, Der Rab, Easter Aquatis, Aquarus, Estley, Ayesid, and I'll just interject here that the word Estley is one of the families that Leslie lay where we get the word lay line from. So Ayesids, which is a star system, and Broom End of Cricky, the Broom End, meaning the sweeping of the procession, of course. The stone circle at Old Keg has the largest recumbent stone in all of Scotland, brought from over 10 kilometres away, and requiring, requiring at least 100 men to move it. So the ancients had a reason for putting the stone where it is found. So I think he's having a go at some of the scholars who <laughs> don't think of these things, but anyway... Stone circles were not just local sundials, you know, it seems to be he's having a go at what the normal narrative is. Yeah, I'd like to meet this guy. But anyway, he goes on to say, Large fires were burned at the site at Old Keg, and Cephas is known as the Fire Kindler. Remember here, the Cephans were the ones who marked the stars. So, the Fire Kindler, the fire, the bow of heaven. Yeah. So, Old Keg may appear in the ancient Sumerian temple hymns, and it is transcribed as the similar El Du Kug, which in Mesopotamian is Kala Delta. Delta Draconis. Of course, Draconis sits right next to the house of Cephas. And uh, we have uh, Draconis in some of these uh, standing stones here. It was further back, of course, for Draconis. We have Draconis right here, the Draco. Uh, and you can see this symbol. I'm going to go on to show what this lightning bolt actually represents and how um, it shows the history of our um, catastrophe and cutting off from the land and then returning to the land and um, so but right now we're looking at the center of heaven and we're looking at Cephas the house of Cephas and the house of Cephas we're looking back onto this uh, Tiamat uh, this is Hydra and this is Absu so I'm speaking here about Cephas' landmark by Neolithic sites in Aberdeenshire. The following take the form of the house of Cephas. So Cephas is over here, in this, over here in this area. Uh, it's not actually shown here. This down here is uh, the, the Cetus, Cetus, C-E-T-U-S. And this is further down in the, the Lothian sort of areas, in the Leviathan area. But what this is shown is the centre of heaven. And this is the Polaris and the two dragons that circle around, this one being Hydra and this one being the Absu. And what I'm reading from his book just now about the Greater Esley, uh, Midmar Kirk, Sun Honey, uh, and stone, uh, the stone circle at Old Keg uh, being the largest one and stones being carried 10, ten kilometres away. Uh, the reason why is because this is the centre of heaven and this is what he's saying in the book. So, the greater Esley marking the larger path is the larger star at the tip of Cephas. So, the house of Cephas uh, sits uh, just there. Um, the greater Esley marking is the larger path, according to his book on page 43. The tip of Cephas, which is not quite exactly on the path of the procession of the pole star, but it's nearby. Um, there are many stones in that area, this is me interjecting here, there are many stones in that area that depict the same story. The smaller, lesser Esley is on the, that exact path. So, it's not the greater one that's important, uh, Esley Stone Circle, which is just south of, um, sort of, down it, Aberdeenshire, um, down that end. So it's just south down there, but it's not the greater Esley that's important, that is, that is the path of uh, Polaris, but it's the lesser Esley, which is exactly the path. The Scottish term Esley is surely related to the Latvian Yuslav, Yusta, meaning zone, band, belt, 
of procession so he's saying here it's the bell of procession now there's notes on the bottom of that I'll put pictures onto of this uh, reading uh, from the book I'll take pictures and put them onto this as well and that will help so on page 44 the, the following page of Anders Collins' book he says here our drawings show all the Neolithic sites marked on the Ordnance Survey map of ancient Britain and show how these represent the stars above so Elgin which is in the north of Aberdeen uh, Shire. Elgin, quite a large city, it has a cathedral. Quarrywood is the star Vega. Alpha Lyra, also Lyra, the harp. In Lyra, this star was called Dilgan, the messenger of light. In Babylonian astronomy, whence perhaps the, it came from, the word Dilgan is where we get the word Elgin, as he says here in this book, De Elgan. The Elgin, the Elgar. Memsey near Fraserburgh, which is further, uh, another uh, burial mound further up. This is my in interjection again, knowing the area. Uh, I grew up in that, that area, so so Memsey near Fraserburgh is the star system, the Arabic star system, Fawaras, Faras, which equals the Gamma Cygnus uh, constellation, because Cygnus is a large house, obviously, and it moves around. Perhaps related to the Hebrew uh, Tishimath. And this is interesting, this is really good because I have a background in the Hebrew and in the Arabic, Herazim. So I understand what these words relate to um, and I understand that it was to do with birds, swans, uh, tishmach, uh, is the, tea, the offerings, uh, 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 Yom Kippur, this, this is all tied to the Yom Kippur, it's probably in the Arabic and the Islamic faith, it's probably all tied to the festival of Eid or something like that, because Eid is Eden, the Garden of Eden, Eid, and it's the same, the Garden of Eden, in what's been known as the Hebrew or the Jewish. So, what, um, the next part, sorry, this is me rambling on, the next part, I'm putting these pictures in so you can, photos of this and you can read it as well, but I'm interjecting what I know. Uh, and this is how I have learned by um, studying the heavens and understanding these signs. But here, uh, this book, which I've just not long uh, received, it's a treasure trove uh, and it's helped me so much. Uh, the maps, some of the maps I did have access to online, I can't find his website anymore, but I have now got this book and I am glad of the purchase and I would intend to get any more of his books. And I do intend to, and I would suggest that anybody else who has an interest in these things, which they should, uh, should get this book, because this book is uh, one of the greatest parts to help solve the puddle, puzzle, <laughs> the puzzle. So, making noises again with my speaker, <laughs> uh, I shall pause it, it seems to work, um, I shall pause it and continue, because I'm going to read the rest of this uh, chapter of this book uh, and then we will um, continue looking at the stones and I will give my explanation of the stones in accordance with what I have just given you from this book. Okay. So interference with the speaker again but anyway we'll try again and see. Um, so we're looking at Tiamat and Absu which is the ancient Babylonian and if you've read uh, Combs Beaumont's book, that wasn't Combs Beaumont's book, uh, but if you know of Combs Beaumont book, books, he talks about uh, the Tiamat, the Absu and other things like that and there are other authors out there who speak about it but they're on the stones and this book which I am reading which is Anders Collins, we got as far as uh, Stricken and Mem or Memsey, I think we got as far as. So I was talking about Memsey near Fraserburgh you know, um, and Stricken. So Stricken is somewhere that I mapped many years ago, and Stricken itself is shaped like a swan. Uh, the whole village, uh, the original village, is shaped like a swan, and that's because that's the story in the heavens, as above, so below. Just as Hercules is all over. Four Crows and Tain and a uh, Corner Bridge and Bon is it Bonner Bridge? Sorry, Bonner Bridge. Um, that um, the whole coastline of Britain. Somebody left a comment on my YouTube earlier, and I said no. They, they, they were Americans. Said they, everything's over America, and I said no. Everything's over the tree, and the tree is here, <laughs> and it's projected everywhere else. 
I have videos from years ago showing all the different cities all over the world. Uh, Moscow, I have Syria, Damascus, and they're all, the geometry is set up everywhere uh, according to the heavens because I've had an interest in the heavens and the standing stones for a long time. Uh, but I've done many videos and spoke a lot about elsewhere and then it brought me back here to the British Isles. I even put on the religious garb and became a Christian minister, a youth minister, and then also I became a Jewish uh, rabbinic intern uh, where I learned when, for 11 years uh, Judaism basically within a messianic Jewish con, uh, sort of construct <laughs> it's a construct because it's all construct but uh, yeah it's, it took me a journey to bring me back here so what we're actually looking at is stricken and stricken itself many years ago I discovered that stricken is shaped like a swan and uh, the whole land of Britain as I just said is shaped in the shape of the constellations above uh, there is a lot more land now because water has been drained away but um, I mean I have got friends who will look at Google Maps and stuff and they'll say oh look at that it looks like a bear and that looks like and there are animals and creatures carved out on the earth um, but I'm not going to go down that route what I want to talk about is the Loudon Wood and the Cairn Cattle near Peterhead is Lacerta uh, Marion Burr and Lagmore are the head of Draco. The two large stars in the head of Draco are Gamma Draconis and Beta Draconis. We find these two, two locations in Scotland at the Bridge of Avon, the Bridge of Heaven. I'll read that again. The Bridge of Avon, the Bridge of Heaven, for Draco is at Heaven's Centre. Did you hear that? That's the bit I really wanted to read. Uh, and somebody did ask me a long time ago about Avon. Uh, uh, Aviemore, yes, Aviemore. It's actually written in this book somewhere as well. I'll, um, we'll get to that at some point. But the word Avon, uh, Avesbury, uh, means heaven. Ave, A-V, means heaven. So, he says in this book, Anders Collins, Marion Burr and Lagmore are the head of Draco. So here's Draco here on this image here. We've got Draco there, um, and we have Draco there, and uh, there's the two, Tima and uh, Apsu, which is Draco, and Tiamat, which is Hydra. Um, so the two large stars of the head of Draco are Gamma Draconis and Beta Draconis. Uh, we find these two locations in Scotland at the Bridge of Avon, the Bridge of Heaven, and Avon is up, uh, sort of, uh, Aberfeldy in the middle there. And the reason why is because the Draco snakes around uh, down towards Dundee, around Andromeda, and back up again and it circles around in an anti-clockwise direction following uh, or being chased by the bear and uh, uh, trying to chase the little bear around the poster and this is the Hydra of course here with the single head but back to the book um, the Bridge of Avon for Draco is heaven's centre Draco is the heaven's centre you see Draco spirals around and this is Tiamat and Absu the two primordials, the face of the deep the Bible in Genesis 1 tells us that there was a, a darkness and a, a swirling of the spirit upon the face of the deep and the almighty creator separated the waters above and the waters below well this is the story of Tiamat and Absu and this is the beast that came out from the sea of the Leviathan which the book of Job speaks about um, but this picture down here is showing a catastrophe which happened and this is the casting down or the coming down of the Helios, the chariot, uh, the Pantheon uh, or Phaeton uh, driving the chariot and the splitting of the atom and the duality and the twins and all that is very important uh, because it seems to be a theme all the way through the story of the, the gods. Uh, so Tom the Very Gamma or Samina Arabic Fark Farkadin. Perhaps there is an ancient relation between Very, a, 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 like the word Tomna, a Very, a Very. Well, I know it's it's heaven, and Farka. The blue cairn at Beta or Samina. The blue cairn is near Aboin. This Aboin may have the same original meaning as the Boin in Ireland or the Avon in England, i.e., the word Heaven. Heaven, he, ven, a, ven. The blue cairn is not blue, but rather it may be the blue as in the word pulu, balu, palu, balu star, pulse, star, which better Ursa Minor was around at 750 BC, when the deep pit 
or hidden centre was perhaps dug into the cairn itself, which is known as the Blue Cairn down by a boy. So Bacarn Polaris, our current pole star, is in Ursa Minor, which I've already showed. The Spanish Bokina, Bugle, Italian Bogena, and the German Bucha. Perhaps the ancient reading Rukaba, which is a Hebrew word, or Rukaba, was backwards. So he said backwards, Bukar, and backwards is Rukaba, take away the N. Glassel, or Torfins, is Delta Ursa Minor, and Glassel is just a little place outside. Five stones in the shape of Cephas make up the glacelle because it sits at the bottom of the tor, the bottom of the circle, the tor fins. Five stars in this part of the sky were known as the ancient Salatorus, eh, Cirque Taurus, the dances around the north celestial pole, and he's just got around, around the ancient pole, but it's beautiful. Eh? So, Red X is Cassiopeia, may bear a relation to the Sumerian, Sumerian word Eridug, we have found that Eridug in the Sumerian temple hymns has an original meaning of Arata, Dargar Darza, which is the meaning of the ploughed garden. Remember, you've got the plough or some major there, also seen as the boar, the wild boar, the beast, eh, also the hunt of, to the Greeks, it was the Artemis, and I'm going to talk about Artemis in a moment, because Artemis and Demeter were seen as the one who went, wore the crown, the crescent moon crown, and I I will look, I will scoot back on this video uh, just quickly because what we're seeing here is just to remind me, just to remind me, where are you? Uh, there, there it's right there, the crown uh, or the, the crescent moon. Now, people who are the scholars, <laughs> the scholars who are out there are hiding things from us because it's quite obvious what this is here. This crescent moon is always just you no know, Z rod bar or V rod bar, but crescent moon. The crescent moon represents Ursa Major. Ursa Major or Artemis or Demetria uh, was represented as the bear, and she had or the boar or the wild, the one of the wild hunt. And this is why you have uh, down here you've got a bird which represents the hawk of Horus and such. Uh, these are over the house, near the house of uh, Cephas, and this here is the area known as Main, uh, Ursa Major, and this is the land of Canaan, and there's a stag here because this is the tree of heaven and the great hunt of, not Orion, but the great hunt of Artemis, or the great hunt of Demeter, or the great hunt of the bear, the bull, the boar, the, um, the Egyptians believed it was a, a, a bull's leg, uh, but this is the center of heaven and this is the great hunt. When uh, Washington, a few years ago, when Trump <laughs> was president, and as again, but when Trump was president, some dude broke into the White House and dressed up as the Great Hunt. Well, that represents Artemis, so that represented the center of heaven. Heaven. They were basically taking the piss. As I've read in this book, and as you can see, heave, aboin, aven, aven. Aven means stone in Hebrew, and aven, aven, you, our father. It means our father in Hebrew. So the word Av, and it also means Ben, Aven, Ab, A, A, V, and B are interchangeable. And this is where the rod comes in and the lightning bolt, because these are uh, vowels, I would say. Uh, there are lightning bolts. These are, but what happened is, um, the closest conclusion that the moon, they get to over the crescent moon is it was a period of time when something happened. And this is a marking. And they're kind of correct, but this is, the sun splitting into and it, we can actually see exactly when it split and when it hit because uh, this is just some of the standing stones but all the standing stones all over um, the UK, the world actually, they have different forms of telling the story but they all tell the same story and what we're looking at here is Arthur the Great Bear, Artemis, Art and this is a symbol for Diana and also Diana was a Roman goddess, but Diana is also the symbol for Artemis the Demeter, and she wore the crescent moon upon her head, so this is Arthur the Great Bear, the boar, uh, the Greeks and the Thracians and other people, the Akkadians and that, uh, uh, Babylonians, Sumerians, those from the Sumer Isles, they had variations of the story, some seen it as a bear, some seen it as a boar, some seen it as a wild hunter, uh, some seen it um, you know, but it was always to do with the hunt and wild creatures, and um, yeah, the boar. 
uh, look up the boar, um, the word boar, it's the word uh, Sue. And in Aberdeenshire they, they call pigs Sue's. Uh, so the Sue's, the pig, um, there's some connection to Zeus there, but I'll go back to that in a, a later recording, not just now. But that's a little tip bit for you. Uh, the word Sue's means pig, and the wild boar represents uh, what we understand as Artemis Demeter, who Zeus put in the heavens. So there's a, a deep connection there was one of the offspring of the Nephilim of the Tiamat and the Absu of the gods was one of those wild creatures, a wild boar, who were put up in the heavens to, um, or the, the bear, the bar, to hold the line. And these are one of the ones that broke ranks. But what we're looking at here is the symbol or sign which the Greek people used. And this is who the Picts are, the Greeks, Akkadians, Sumerians. They used this symbol for Artemis or for Ursa Major. And with the help of this book, Stars, Stones and Skulls, The Decipherment of the Megaliths by Anders Collins, Collins has helped me on the journey, which has been a 30, 40 years journey, uh, 40 years journey. Uh, piecing this together, but right on this shield here, and I will stop it because we're getting 30 minutes and people get tired after that, and we'll jump in with the, a continuation of uh, a breakdown of more parts of the stones as we go on. Uh, but I wanted to make use of this video rather than just waste it and not speak through it. Um, speaking is how the word is penetrated into our ears. But what we're looking at here in this crescent is not just a crescent moon. We are seeing the lightning bolt of Zeus and it's uh, an electrical force coming down. You can see this straight line on, on this side and there would have been one on that side too. Uh, but this straight line is a marking of days, you can see the angles, and these are a counting of days, that's the counting of days, um, and that happened here in Aries, the disaster hut, unfortunately the stone is broken, but uh, cracked, but they put it together, but here you can see that this is Draco, uh, the Draco, uh, the head is at Fort George, and Ursa Major, uh, there's some major sits from Fort George, which is at the Pictish Fort. Uh, there's a Pictish Temple just above um, Inverness, and that's the Ark of Heaven here, which is represented by the the bear or the boar. And this was Artemis's symbol she had on her head, a crown with a crescent moon. And what we are seeing in here is Artemis, which was the measurement of time, the boar, the great bear. It still is a measurement of time because it sits alongside the pole star and the circle of heaven. And what we are seeing here is the symbol for Aries. So a disaster happened at the beginning of Aries in the first quarter of Aries. Something hit Draco. And on the continuation of the stones, we'll just scoot through this now. There will be other parts of this book I'll read. Uh, because we are getting on a bit, but in the other parts of this stone you see that it continued on this disaster, this lightning bolt, uh, um, which split the, the, the sun, uh, which I believe is probably Sirius, and our present day sun is split, and that story is told as Helios, or Hyperion, or Hyperion, uh, or Photon, or Phaeton, uh, took his dad's chariot and... Um, that would be Sirius, he would be Sirius, Photon, Phaeton, and he took his dad's chariot and crashed it, took the horses and crashed it into the Aerodanus, and the Aerodanus is actually below, there we go again, I'll pause it again because we'll finish this last moment. Yeah, the Aerodanus sits down at the borders of Scotland, but this here is the vanity mirror of Cassiopeia, which is where the disaster struck between Draco and Cassiopeia in this North Celestial Pole, which is mentioned uh, in this book and mentioned by our ancestors with all the cairns and stones. So we can see when the disaster actually struck in a calendar, at what time uh, on the vernal equinox we were actually going into as you can see by this one here, not just this one, there's many, this is a symbol of the ram, the Aries, and this is the the two birds. These were these these were um, seen as the birds, the two birds that guarded Eden by the Egyptians, two um, Horuses, two eagles, sort of thing, and that's where we, the Zeus thing comes into, it's the birds of Zeus, uh, but in the centre here you've got the three arches of heaven, and in the centre is Aries, where it, where it struck within uh, um, Arthur the Great Bear, and the circle's right there, uh, but Polaris sits down down here, 
uh, separated by, and that's what this symbol would represent down here in this corner. Um, it's below ground, but that's what this is. This is the, the centre of heaven. <coughs> and it struck just short of the centre of heaven and created the disaster that we know as um, the, the flood of Noah or the Atlantic, the, the Atlantean flood uh, disruption of Atlantis. So I hope this helps and I will put lots of little clips in for the book um, and get the book if you can.